Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1026A, and today's date is July 19th, 2016, and the title of the episode is, It Begins, The Declining Global Economy is Being Blamed on the Brexit. Now, before we begin, I just have an announcement. I placed a new interview on the X-22 Report Spotlight YouTube channel, so if you go over to YouTube, type in X-22 Report Spotlight, you'll see the interview with Jeff Nielsen. Or you can come over to the x22report.com site, scroll down a little bit, look over to your right-hand side, you'll see the interview there. Or you can go to newssentinel.com, same thing, scroll down a little bit, look over to the right-hand side, and you can view and listen to the interview there. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, the market was pretty much flat today. Gold was pretty much flat today. Uh, Gold is maintaining 13 and change right now, staying above the $1,300 mark. And we realize that the people throughout Europe, they're starting to understand that the ECB, the central bankers, they can't do anything to help the economy. Because if you really think about it, the entire premise of the central bank is to maintain or inspire economic confidence. Now, we know that's not really what they're there for. They're there to spread debt. They're there to take the natural resources of countries. They're there to put people into debt and to control them. But when they created the central bank and they intertwined with the governments, they used the mantra that, yes, we're here to help. We're here to maintain economic confidence, to control the economy so it doesn't crash. But we can see that it's all smoke and mirrors. And the people are not buying it anymore. This morning's zoo data on German and European consumer confidence, it is a complete disaster. Both the current situation and expectations for Germany tumbled what we're seeing is hope. European economic growth and hope has crashed to its lowest since 2012. So everything Mario Draghi promised to do whatever it takes did not help. It has failed. The people are looking at this. They don't believe. Hope is gone. Their expectations for the economy doing much, much better Well, it's gone. Then if we look here in the United States, what do we see? Well, if we're going by the Gallup poll, which is a poll taken by uh, Gallup among the people, compared to what the government does, we see two opposite things. The Gallup poll right now is showing that people, their confidence in the economy is declining rapidly. And Americans' confidence remains remains very, very, very weak. Gallup's U.S. Economic Confidence Index is at negative 17. Now, we came from negative 12, and it's dropped to negative 17. And this reading is tied for the worst economic confidence reading recorded in the last few years. And what does this suggest? Americans, right now, believe that the economy is getting worse, not better. And that's what we're seeing. And it's funny, when we look at the Gallup graph, we see back in January of 2015, where people saw uh, the economy as doing well, and that number was at a 5. It was above 0. And then since January of 2015, it has slid. If we move to March 2015, it slid to 1. Then we went directly into the negative range, ending up September 15th, uh, September of 2015 at negative 17. And then we bounced around between negative 15, negative 9, negative 16, and here we are in July of 2016 at negative 17. So this is in a downward trend. People are not looking at the economy thinking it's going to get better. Actually, they're thinking it's going to get much, much worse. So the U.S., came out with their housing numbers today and they're all saying that housing is getting better we're seeing a increase of starts but the thing they forgot to tell everyone 
is they made a huge downward revision. Because month on month, they have it as housing starts jumping at four, uh, housing starts starting at 4.8%. So it jumped to 4.8%. Showing that, yeah, look, everything is awesome. But when you step back, year over year, starts dropped by 0.2%. The second annual drop in three months. The growth in housing is slowing. So they revise the numbers. They show a little snapshot of what's going on. And they tell you that the housing market is recovering. But when we look at this and we look at it very closely, what do we really see? Well, housing starts, they're back to January of 1991 levels. The housing market has not improved. Nothing's been the same since the housing bubble. They haven't improved anything. I mean, look at the labor participation rate. It's all-time lows. Look at retail, contracting. Housing, we're back to 1990 levels. Home ownership, we're back to the 70s. So when they talk about how things are surging, they're looking at a very little tiny window here, just in this month where they revised it. But when you step back and you look at it and say, okay, well, housing is at the same level as 1991, the starts. How is this an improvement? Well, it isn't. We're nowhere near where we were back in 99, in 2000 to 2004, 2005 going into 2008. Nothing has changed except, of course, the U.S. making it, the U.S. government making it look like it's much better than it really is. And you have to realize that the U.S. population, it has grown by 37.25% since 1990, while one unit housing starts are the same, are at the same level. So we can see right now that really nothing has changed. Actually, it's gotten a lot, lot worse. And when we look at the housing market, we see things are rapidly falling apart. If we go to the Hamptons, for instance, very wealthy area, the housing prices are astronomical. But we see right now that overall sales, they have plunged by half and home prices have fallen sharply in the second quarter. Total sales volume in the East Hampton fell by 53% from a year ago to 44.7 million, as the median sales price fell 54% to 2.38 million. Yes, it's still up there, but what it shows us is things are rapidly coming down. In Southampton, total sales fell by 48%. Prices are falling by 21%. This shows us something. It's starting to spread and it will continue to spread to many different towns and cities. And the same thing's happening out in London, where there are home sellers, they're looking for buyers, and guess what? They can't find any. They're slashing their asking prices just to get rid of their properties. Since the Brexit vote, and this has nothing to do with the Brexit, and I'll explain it in a little bit, they have cut the asking prices by 163%. Sales have plunged by 18%. And the Brexit wasn't the cause of all of this. Because back in December 2015, we saw that luxury housing in London was already declining. This is based on the Lawn Res report for the third quarter. And we can see right now is that people just don't have the funds to purchase. The traffic is drying up. And we're seeing this in many different areas. And these bubbles are starting to pop. Now, the Baltic Dry Index, it has shot up in the last couple of weeks to 746. It is down two points, and this magically shot up right after the Brexit. But we can see right now it's leveling off, 
and it's starting to fall again, still well below where we should be, and we'll watch that very closely. Some people are saying that this number is now manipulated, but we'll have to watch it and see where this heads. Now, the IMF is out there, and they are blaming what is going on in the global economy on the Brexit. So we can see this has begun. They're already saying that, ah, uh, because the people voted, it's because of the Brexit, this is why the economy is um, slowing, this is why we're seeing a decline in many different areas, this is why we're revising our outlook, and this is exactly what the IMF has done. They revised their global outlook for 2016, and they dropped to uh, to 3.1 percent, and they've dropped 2017 to 3.4 percent, which we know these numbers are still way too high. IMF normally overpredicts everything, and you can slash these numbers in half because we can see right now that as the global economy slows and declines, which has nothing to do with the Brexit, it's been happening a very long time. We've been tracking this, looking at this. We can see right now that this is going to continue, but they need a scapegoat. They need to blame others for what is happening right now, and this is exactly what they're starting to do. Most likely, they'll be starting to blame Turkey, saying that, ah, because of this coup, we also have other financial problems, and it's going to spread. So they're using whatever they possibly can to blame everything on another group, another country, a vote, or whatever they possibly can, because they don't want to be responsible for what is about to happen, and that is a major collapse of the system. And this is why everyone has to be prepared and ready. I mean, look at Venezuela. They have a difficult time purchasing food. There's no supplies. It's getting harder and harder for the people. And we can see here in this country, as things rapidly deteriorate, you also need to be uh, um, prepared for what is about to happen. And that is medical supplies, food, weapons. If you're going to Costco, continue to do that. If you're going to the supermarket to buy your canned foods, do that. If you're using LifeReliance.com, uh, continue to do that. You can get... Um, water filtration systems, you can get uh, emergency food, they deliver right to your door. If you're going to Sam's Club, continue to go there. Of course, you got to make the trip to these places. But whatever you're doing, do not stop. Because as we can see, the world is becoming more and more chaotic. We can see they're pushing more false flags. We can see they're trying to f have people fight with each other to distract them from what is really happening. We can see war is being provoked. We can see many things occurring at once, and this is all being done on purpose to distract from this entire collapse of the system. Now, Obama is out there, and he is pushing his Obamacare 2.0. And we discussed this a little bit in reports uh, previous to this. So Obama wants to fix his unconstitutional Obamacare with an unconstitutional fix. Now, the Affordable Care Act, as we know, is not working. It is a failed plan. Because one of the promises was, by setting up these co-ops, insurance was going to be very cheap and it was going to be affordable so everyone can get their hands on it. But guess what? That didn't happen. Premiums skyrocketed co-ops defaulted, closed, and the whole thing's falling apart. Now, some are saying this was planned. So Obama would be able to introduce a single-payer government-run system. And we can see this is where he is headed. Now, do you really think the government can run anything better? Because as we know, once the government takes over, all of a sudden, these things grow, more money is spent, things are not run properly, they have to borrow more from the Fed, taxpayers are taxed more for it, and it ends in a failure. And we can see this has been happening throughout the government. And once these programs take root, they just don't go away, they don't shrink. And this is exactly what Obama wants. He wants everyone connected to the government 
in some way where the government is supporting them. They want the people to be dependent on the government instead of the people being independent. This is their plan. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot. Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1026A, and today's date is July 19th, 2016, and the title of the episode is, It Begins, The Declining Global Economy is Being Blamed on the Brexit. Now, before we begin, I just have an announcement. I placed a new interview on the X-22 Report Spotlight YouTube channel. So if you go over to YouTube, type in X-22 Report Spotlight, you'll see the interview with Jeff Nielsen. Or you can come over to the x22report.com site, scroll down a little bit, look over to your right-hand side, you'll see the interview there. Or you can go to... Did not help. It has failed. The people are looking at this. They don't believe. Hope is gone. Their expectations for the economy doing much, much better... Well, it's gone. Then if we look here in the United States, what do we see? Well, if we're going by the Gallup poll, which is a poll taken by uh, Gallup among the people, compared to what the government does, we see two opposite things. The Gallup poll right now is showing that people, their confidence in the economy mirrors. And the people are not buying it anymore. This morning's zoo data on German and European consumer confidence, it is a complete disaster. Both the current situation and expectations for Germany tumbled, but what we're seeing is hope. European economic growth and hope has crashed to its lowest since 2012. So everything Mario Draghi promised to do whatever it takes to NewsSentinel.com, same thing, scroll down a little bit, look over to the right-hand side, and you can view and listen to the interview there. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, the market was pretty much flat today. Gold was pretty much flat today. Uh, Gold is maintaining 13 and change right now, staying above the $1,300 mark, and we realize that the people throughout Europe, they're starting to understand that the ECB, the central bankers, they can't do anything to help the economy. Because if you really think about it, the entire premise of the central bank is to maintain or inspire economic confidence. Now, we know that's not really what they're there for. They're there to spread debt. They're there to take the natural resources of countries. They're there to put people into debt and to control them. But when they created the central bank and they intertwined with the governments, they used the mantra that, yes, we're here to help. We're here to maintain economic confidence, to control the economy so it doesn't crash. But we can see that it's all smoke. European economic growth and hope has crashed to its lowest since 2012. So everything Mario Draghi promised to do whatever it takes did not help. It has failed. The people are looking at this. They don't believe. Hope is gone. Their expectations for the economy doing much, much better, well, it's gone. Then if we look here in the United States, what do we see? Well, If we're going by the Gallup poll, which is a poll taken by uh, Gallup among the people, compared to what the government does, we see two opposite things. The Gallup poll right now is showing that people, their confidence in the economy is declining rapidly. And Americans' confidence remains, remains very, very, very weak. Gallup's U.S. Economic Confidence Index is at negative 17. Now, we came from negative 12, and it's dropped to negative 17. 
And this reading is tied for the worst economic confidence reading recorded in the last few years. And what does this suggest? Americans right now believe that the economy is getting worse, not better. And that's what we're seeing. And it's funny when we look at the Gallup Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, the market was pretty much flat today. Gold was pretty much flat today. Uh, gold is maintaining 13 and change right now, staying above the $1,300 mark. And we realize that the people throughout Europe, they're starting to understand that the ECB, the central bankers, they can't do anything to help the economy. Because if you really think about it, the entire premise of the central bank is to maintain or inspire economic confidence. Now, we know that's not really what they're there for. They're there to spread debt. They're there to take the natural resources of countries. Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1026A, and today's date is July 19th, 2016, and the title of the episode is, It Begins, The Declining Global Economy is Being Blamed on the Brexit. Now, before we begin, I just have an announcement. I placed a new interview on the X-22 Report Spotlight YouTube channel. So if you go over to YouTube, type in X-22 Report Spotlight, you'll see the interview with Jeff Nielsen. Or you can come over to the x22report.com site, scroll down a little bit, look over to your right-hand side, you'll see the interview there. Or you can go to newssentinel.com, same thing, scroll down a little bit, look over to the right-hand side, and you can view and listen to the interview there. They're there to put people into debt and to control them. But when they created the central bank and they intertwined with the governments, they used the mantra that, yes, we're here to help. We're here to maintain economic confidence, to control the economy so it doesn't crash. But we can see that it's all smoke and mirrors. And the people are not buying it anymore. This morning's zoo data on German and European consumer confidence, it is a complete disaster. Both the current situation and expectations for Germany tumbled, but what we're seeing is hope. 